So good morning, guys. Thank you for your time. I know there are people from different countries, different time zones. Thank you very much for joining today's session. So this is session one. This is first session. This is a series of five different sessions that Abhishek is going to cover on marketing analytics. Abhishek, thank you very much for your time. Introduce yourself with the audience, and please start on the marketing analytics part. All right, great. Thanks, Abhishek. Good morning, good evening, and good afternoon, everyone, uh, from wherever you are logging in. And uh, let me start sharing my screen. Hope you should be able to see my screen now. So yeah, so thanks Ashish again for uh, setting this up. It's a great opportunity to, to share uh, so far what I have learned in my professional experience and my current uh, educational experience. So we will have this uh, series of webinars, which is uh, technically based on marketing analytics. So this is the first webinar in this series. And uh, agenda for this uh, today's session is we'll talk about uh, uh, myself. We'll have a quick poll and uh, we will discuss why web analytics is required. Uh, what is web analytics, some key concepts in web analytics. Um, and we'll do the demo on Google Analytics and Adobe Analytics. All of these um, concepts, I will make sure that, uh, that the students who have joined in here for the session will have uh, something to take away. Because as a student, we always think that after we graduate, what, what is the need of web analytics? Where I can find a good job opportunities in web analytics if I have some interest in analytics. So that is important. So I will make sure that, uh, give me one second, I guess uh, somebody is waiting. Fine. I will take care of that, Abhishek. You can continue. Thanks, Ashish. All right. So, yeah. So uh, the goal here is to um, help students to understand the need of web analytics in the uh, enterprise industry. Like when you go to the college and you would like to understand how this web analytics will fit in your career and how you can basically uh, make a decisions um, in, in basically choosing the, the right product of web analytics when you move on to your career. So uh, we will start with a quick poll. So Ashish, do you mind uh, uh, adding the poll link at the top of the chat? Sure, I can do that. Thank you. Uh, the poll is live, so you sh you guys should be able to see the poll. Yeah, I see people are voting now. Okay, so people are voting, great. So while people are voting, I'll, I'll keep continue with my you know, quick introduction. So as I said, my name is Abhishek Kumar and I have more than 10 years of uh, industry experience in web analytics and data analytics. Um, I was working for Adobe for more than six and a half year. And before that I was working for SIP and Publicis. And then for a certain number of uh, months, I worked for ITC Infotech uh, in Bangalore office. And uh, since last one, one year, I'm actually uh, doing my master's in business analytics from Boston University, uh, where Ashish uh, and myself, we were working together in Adobe a few years ago. So it's a great opportunity Ashish has gave me uh, to collaborate and work with the student uh, community here. So thanks to Ashish again. About this uh, series of webinars, uh, this is our first webinar. The second webinar will be on web and data analytics where we will be talking about different techniques we'll be using in web analytics for data analysis. And we will also talk about what is uh, like data analytics and how it is different than web analytics and the tools available for data analytics. One of the key tools we will be, focus, we'll be focusing on this webinar is um, Jupyter Notebook. It's a, it's a free tool, it will, uh, it will be easy to download. Um, and uh, before we start the second session, we, I'm going to send some prerequisite so that you can do the analysis in parallel with me if you would like to. 
And then in the third one, we will do some uh, exploratory data analysis um, on the Jupyter Notebook. And then we will do predictive analysis in the fourth session. And the fifth session, we will talk about some A-B A -B testing, uh, the key concepts of A-B testing algorithms and some segmentations and association rules through Jupyter Notebook. Uh, we'll use a sample data set. I will be, used, I will be sending those prerequisites before the uh, beginning of the second session so that you can download the sample data set. You can set up the Jupyter Notebook on your machine if you would like to do the parallel work. So all those things will be taken care of by Ashish. All right, so any questions here? Any questions on objective of the uh, seminar? Okay, great. And I have closed the polling, the results uh, you guys should be able to see. Okay, so I see a few people have a good experience in Adobe Analytics. Um, so you are familiar with Adobe Analytics, but uh, uh, no familiarity with Mixpanel, Facebook, and App Flyers. And, um, a lot of people have familiarity with the basic concepts of web analytics. So that's great. Um, and uh, yeah, but uh, people are familiar with the tool, but they have not used the tool. That's the majority of the people. And some people are architect and they help in the integrating these analytics platform with the, their client systems. So that is, that is also good to know. So that's great. Thanks Ashish for sharing the poll. Uh, let's get back to the uh, presentation mode. All right. So, we all know why web analytics, you know, uh, many company uh, start their business um, and the business is basically only for one purpose, to gain revenue, to make money, you know? And when you have an online business, you cannot make more money without any strategy. And, and that's where you basically think of web analytics, how you can grow your business online. Uh, what is the best geographic location? What is the best audiences you should be using to basically gain your business online? That's where web analytics come to, come to the picture. So essentially web analytics is the key player in expanding your business if you are holding a business online. And the second important thing uh, why, why we, we should do web analytics is expanding your marketing budget. So a lot of companies are spending millions of dollars, millions of dollars, you know, and, uh, and, and, and for what reason? To expand their uh, online business. And, and you know, one, one marketing campaign cost companies like Target or companies like Home Depot million dollar. But, uh, but if you look at the effectiveness of the marketing campaign, uh, basically they get the click through rate like 1.2% click uh, 1.2 or maximum 2% of those click through rates. So imagine they, they are using so much money but the click through is always less. Uh, and how they can improve on those click through numbers and how they can get more customers to buy the products. Um, so basically it's important to understand, um, you know, where, like, where are you spending the marketing budget? Where are you spending money, you know? And what is the best marketing campaign where you can spend the money? You know, there are so many ways you can, uh, you can spend your money uh, in marketing um, to get more users and, and to get more orders. But uh, the more important thing here is that, um, how would you know, how do you know? So. Data analysis and web analytics comes into the picture there. So that's why, you know, you have to do the web analytics. You have to think about web analytics when you are thinking to spend your money, um, you know, effectively in your marketing campaign. Also, uh, the third and very important ex uh, uh, reason why we should be using web analytics is improving the customer experience. Customer experience has been the key and the, uh, and the, the main centric goal for every company nowadays. If if customers are having so many options, if customers are facing even single problem, they will move on to the next, next product, similar product, I would say. So, so customer experience is, is really important. You know, um, how, how we basically um, work, uh, uh, like how we basically improve the customer experience using web analytics, there are different way to do that. Uh, and that's a skill you will probably learn when you go to the companies and, and when you're in the school, you will learn those techniques, how you basically ex improve the experience. So one of the key way to experience the customer experience uh, is improve your site experience. And, 
and by, by tweaking your app's website as you need. Um, and then when you're launching a new product, how you're launching a new product to uh, have a better custom experience. So these are the questions are really important and this cannot be answered without having web analytics on your digital products. So that's why we certainly need to have web analytics uh, at this moment. And it is, it is growing, it's growing, it's growing. So many companies are launching their own web analytics. Amazon has its own analytics in their AWS. Facebook has its own analytics. Yahoo has its own analytics. Twitter has its own analytics. And uh, we have uh, analytics for everything these days. Um, like uh, I would say one, uh, one quick example um, on, um, on like these days, uh, a lot of people are doing shoppings. And, uh, and when, when they do shoppings, um, they, they're basically being asked to uh, allow cookies, you know, and people are afraid of, uh, of, you know, allowing the cookies. So a lot of people, um, they say deny the cookie, you know, and there is, there is a growing perception uh, in this, in this world that, that these companies are basically tracking my every move and every actions. And that is, that is true. But when you look at uh, from the, from a data architect perspective and the company perspective, um, these companies are also coming up with the more creative solutions to, uh, to basically track more data. Even though you are saying deny a cookie, but uh, the company know that you are clicking on deny. So they have to come up with something, other, something or other way to track your behaviors on the page. So it's, it's like, you know, you try to get away with this, but there is no way to get away with this. That's the, that's the nature of the web analytics, uh, um, it's, it's, which is evolving these days. And one of the uh, more recent and interesting thing happening is uh, analytics on the variable devices like Apple Watch or Samsung Watch. So people are doing analytics over there and they are getting some interesting insights. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, um, yeah, these are the analytics, you know, you cannot get away with that. <laughs> you, you, you basically wear um, Apple Watch or Fitbit you can see the data, and then you get uh, you get pumped up to do more exercise. Uh, you you share that data with your friends. The friends will see, hey, Abhishek has basically uh, taken seven thousand steps, but I have taken only five thousand steps. So let me do more steps tomorrow. So basically, these are uh, a way to uh, you know uh, make you feel positive sometimes. And sometimes when you don't do good work in your uh, in your Apple Watch or Fitbit, probably sometimes it gives you a negative impact also. But anyways, we are we are focused on web analysis today. We will we'll take that in our dis different forums. All right. So what is web analytics? Everybody is aware about web analytics. Uh, so it's a very old term, web analytics. Um, it is it is being used uh, uh, like more than um, since the web is there. You know, um, since since nineties, um, and it's a very traditional term, web analytics. Web analytics means whatever there on the web, we are doing the tracking and doing the analysis. So analytics means tracking as well as analysis, both combined together. Uh, right now, these days, web analytics is a very broad term where this can be applied on mobile app also because uh, it's also on the web, even though it's a mobile app, but it's on the web, you know? And the OTT, which is also has an integration with the web. So um, I, I can say that web analytics can be defined in a broader term right now, where you track and analyze everything from the website, from the mobile app, from any OTT. Um, like uh, OTT means um, a device which basically we use to watch Netflix, like, um, like Alexa device of Amazon, like Roku and Xbox, PS4. Um, different kiosk, uh, when you go to the shopping mall, you need to register something there. And then the POS system, which is there for transactions uh, at uh, you know, Target or Walmart or anywhere. So, so companies are coming up with a lot of uh, ways to, to basically track the data and bring the data onto the cloud. Um, you know, and uh, everything's related to web, web is like the web analytics, you know. But primarily when you, when you um, study in the university or when you graduate and go to the industry to work, you will deal with uh, so many different varieties of web analytics. Um, and as I said, 
Mobile app analytics is one of the varieties, um, but inside that also, there are different type of apps uh, basically exist. You know, the content analytics is very common. Um, so if, as you see in my screen right now, I have mentioned the different kind of web analytics tool. So these, these tools are, are basically different from each other, but they are coming under web analytics tool itself. So as you see, web analytics basically covers a broad aspects of uh, data um, on, on, on different uh, digital platforms. So for example, content analytics, consumer analytics, UX analytics, you know, A-B testing and optimizations analytics, SEO, social media analytics, and product analytics and enterprise analytics, you know. So for example, if you, if you have a product, Facebook is a product, Facebook thinks that Facebook is a product. So, so why can't Facebook uh, have a, a content analytics? Why can't Facebook have consumer analytics? So Facebook is a huge platform. It, it, it has everything. It has everything. It has content analytics, it has consumer analytics, it has UX analytics. They do A-B testing, optimization, they do SEO, social media they also do, and they have a product analytics also. So one company can have all different varieties of analytics. So one, it's possible that one company can use multiple web analytics tool. Uh, like as an entrepreneur, I can say to you that when I was having a company back there in India, I was using at least four web analytics product. On my on my business to capture different type of data, you know, so a company can use the um, you know from one to ten web analytics tool to capture different type of data. As you see, I have mentioned some of the examples. Uh, some of you guys must be familiar with uh, the popular products like uh, uh, Google Analytics. Here, uh, Alexa is really popular in SEO analytics, where it gives you rankings of the site and gives you more information as you sign in as enterprise user over there. Crazy, crazy egg, hot jar, it gives you the UX analytics means it gives you from which part of the website people are basically having more traffic, people are clicking more. So it gives you like sort of like heat map sort of thing on a website to understand how you can optimize the content or the UX of the website or a mobile app. So <clears throat> similarly, Adobe Analytics, and Google Analytics is really popular in the product analytics domain. Uh, it is, it's, it's a very um, vast product, Adobe Analytics and Google Analytics. That's why a lot of enterprise basically prefer this tool where they can uh, uh, mix their uh, web data with their enterprise data and they can do analysis together. So it's very common uh, in an enterprise. So as you go out, uh, from, uh, from, go out from after the graduation, you will see a um, lot of companies like uh, Walmart, they are using Adobe Analytics, but they, they're also using Google Analytics. So it's very common that a company using these two tools together side by side. And you know it could be a different goal. Uh, Google Analytics is being used for a different goal and Adobe Analytics is used for different goals. So it's very common. Um, you don't have to be surprised that you will face a lot of issues when you are working as a data analyst uh, in the company, why my data of Google Analytics is not matching with Adobe Analytics? Why my <clears throat> conversion from the KISS metrics is not matching uh, with, the, with the Adobe Analytics? You know? So these are going to be a very, very uh, basic questions you have to deal with as a business analyst when you join the industry uh, while working with these tools. Any questions at the moment? I will, I'll take a, like a 15 seconds break so that uh, people can look at the slides and people can ask any questions. They can unmute themselves and they can ask me questions. And for students, like when I hear that they, there are plenty of uh, organizations who are using either Google Analytics or Adobe Analytics, what I also understand is there are a lot of job opportunities. So if you know Google Analytics or Adobe Analytics, uh, you have a huge opportunity to get into these organizations and start your career in web analytics. Yeah, absolutely, Ashish, absolutely. Uh, so the web analytics is be is becoming kind of sort of a niche uh, domain for for people who are getting into data analytics. You know, the reason why because uh, it's it's uh, 
it, it, it's it's not very complex one one thing i can definitely tell you it's not very complex but it also uh, more of like uh, you have to be very analytical uh, when you when you work on the web because it's important to understand um, uh, that what what you are trying to measure so this this slide basically talks about that so uh, i'm coming to to the, to the main thing like like in web analytics what we should be focusing on you know so when when you graduate and when you go out of the uh, different companies uh, you will be talking to different uh, digital marketing people as a business analyst or maybe as a data analyst you will be talking to a digital marketing team you will be talking to a product marketing team and you will be talking to uh, you know product team, uh, analytics team both uh, also so <clears throat> they will they will come up and ask you very simple questions hey this is what um, uh, we are launching a new uh, website uh, you know this is a new version of the website we would like to uh, do the web analytics and you are the web analytics expert in your company so how how would you approach this uh, as a as a web analyst or business analyst or data analyst that's a very important thing so you you have to think through in a very clear way uh, what you want um, and and how you want so for example if you get a website you will basically look at the, the website you will have a basically a uh, initial meetings with the with the stakeholders to understand what are what are the goals to to uh, to do the web analytics on the website like why we should be doing web analytics that's very was first question you should be asking to the your stakeholders and then <clears throat> suggest some key metrics to your stakeholders confidently and also ask other key metrics what your stakeholders would like to track in your uh, web analytics you know and then once you have those key metrics and the goals with you uh, properly written uh, in excel sheet or or documented anywhere you will try to find out which tool basically gets you all the you no know, metrics so so i have i have seen very commonly it's very common in, in in this in this enterprise world that not one tool cannot give you all the metrics uh, needs to be tracked by the product team or product marketing team or the digital marketing so, so in that case you should be using different multiple tools you know so you need to find out the best tool which basically suits to track all the key metrics in your in your experience so that you it's your job to find out that tool and then you have to procure that tool you have to buy the tool for your for your team if you are uh, if you are basically on a mid 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 senior level positions and then after you have the tool you will be start integrating the tool with your uh, website so how you do that you implement the basic code on your website implementation is important because implementation is a little bit technical so you have a very clear strategy on how you are going to implement in the web analytics world such as uh, google analytics implementation is basically done through javascript so if you are mm, understanding javascript html css then that's great it's a good to have skills and in general in web analytics i would say if you are looking to uh, make a uh, you know career in web analytics i would recommend to at least go through the basics of javascript go through the basics of html css and jquery it's a, it's really important because you will be working with the code day in day out if you are going to implement the tool it is also common that you are source somebody to implement the tool and as a product owner as a web analytics tool owner you will be overseeing the work of the outsourced person so that is also common but it's all up to you if your team would like to ask you to implement it so you have to implement and then you have to after implementing the tool you have to integrate the tool with your existing systems so your your big data team would like to have the web analytics data in their data platform so you have to work on that part so make sure that all the key metrics comes together uh in the big chunk of database that's that that, that is also really important uh when you work in a in a team and then and then after you have all the data from uh from your website where you have implemented a brand new tool uh with the new key metrics you basically analyze the data you analyze the data Uh, on the built-in dashboards and the built-in reports of the tool so for example google analytics have a built-in dashboards and built-in reports so you can use those reports and built-in dashboards to analyze those data you can basically extract this, those data from these tools 
and you can uh, push those data into a Microsoft Excel, Power BI, you can use Tableau to, uh, to come up with the dashboards or come up with the report and you can share those reports and dashboards with the required uh, team, the product team or any team who has basically asked this. Now, the last part is also important in web analytics, enhancing the, 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 the tags and maintaining the tags. Uh, so tag is a very common term, basically you will hear in web analytics. It means uh, the, 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 the thing which you are going to uh, uh, use to, to track. So for example, if I say tag, tag means either, either you tracking the page, either you tracking the click. So tag could be page or it could be click. So this is very common uh, in web analytics. Uh, a lot of uh, the web analytics tool basically um, either they use both the tags or either they use only one tag, which is like the click. So they'll have a click based uh, tags and some of the tools also have the page based tags. So it's it's very common. So you basically um, uh, work with, the, with, with those uh, tags and uh, ongoing, you will be maintaining those tags. I mean, you face a lot of challenges. It's, it's not very easy. For example, when you, uh, when you implement some code on the page, it might be possible that the code gets break because of JavaScript, you know, sometimes JavaScript does not get load and whatever information which you are passing in the tool, it might not get picked from the page. So, so those tags will not work. So you will have to fix those tags. How you fix those with the help of developers, with the help of your team, and then you have to improve the tracking. You know, you have to improve the data tracking uh, throughout the, uh, the implementation. And then after you get mature, you have to fix, you have to make sure that the, you automate the process. You automate the QA process. You automate the documentation process. All those things you need to consider uh, when you design a complete web analytics cycle in your in your uh, business. Any question here? I know this is a, a very heavy lifting uh, concept because uh, when you go out, you have to deal with these concepts in and out. You have to uh, use the tool, you have to uh, fix the tags, you have to improve the tracking, you have to look at the metrics um, day in, day out. So a lot of informations are available already on the internet. So for example, if you would like to understand what are the key metrics of the e-commerce, you can go and Google it. Uh, you will find the key metrics on e-commerce. What are the key metrics on travel websites? You can get it. What are the key metrics on a uh, FinTech app? So app which provides you a loan. You can, you can get those informations from the online uh, go on by Googling. There are so many blog posts out there which will tell you about the key metrics. So as a web analyst, you should be aware of the key metrics which are required to be tracked. And then you approach the, the implementation problem. So don't jump on the implementation problem right away. First, uh, analyze what needs to be tracked and what all the key metrics which you are going to report on. And then you go to implement those uh, uh, tags or those key metrics. Any questions here? Ashish, any questions on the chat? Do you see any questions? Uh, there were a few, I have already addressed them. So you can proceed. All right, great. So I'm going to share my screen again in, in a couple of seconds because I'm going to do a quick uh, Google Analytics demo. Mm, all right, so let's take a quick demo on Google Analytics. A lot of people are familiar with Google Analytics, but, uh, but I guess a lot of people, they don't know how to implement Google Analytics. So for them, uh, there are a few references I have added in, in the document. So we will be sharing the presentation. So you can uh, look at the references link where you can go ahead and learn the implementation uh, of Google Analytics. By far, uh, whatever tools available of web analytics in the market, Google Analytics is one of the most popular enterprise tools, uh, enterprise and free tool available for every entrepreneur. And and as an entrepreneur, I also use Google Analytics free version. I did not go for the paid version. So there are two versions of Google Analytics available when you, when you go to your company, uh, when, when your stakeholders will ask you, we have to implement Google Analytics. 
then you will wonder, okay, there are two versions, which version I should be implementing, Google free version or Google 360 version. So a quick search will help you uh, do a quick search on free version of Google Analytics versus Google Analytics 360. It will tell you what is your need and what you can get out of these two versions. So yeah, so you have to do these pre exercises before you choose a product. Um, I chose Google Analytics free version because that was basically uh, fulfilling my needs. So here you see, uh, this is the Google Analytics UI. And um, this is where you have all the accounts. Um, and as you see, analytics.google.com is the URL you, you can navigate. And uh, so you have, this is the left panel where you have all those reports, uh, automated dashboards. You'll have a custom dashboards also where you can see some of the basic insights provided by Google um, or by default, you will see all these, all these. When you create, when you create this, this will be your by default homepage, and they will put all these uh, data, you know. And then you can customize. You can create the dashboards. You can create the custom reports. You can save the reports. You can create custom alerts. So, for for example, you would like to create an alert uh, using. Uh, certain metrics. So for example, if your revenue is going down today because of some web analytics issue, uh, then you can create a custom alert and that alert will be sent to your stakeholders via email saying that something is down, something is not working on the system because, because it's important to understand why data is going down. So this alerts will help you to fix any problem on your page. You will have a real-time report and then you have all these uh, audiences, acquisitions reports, conversion reports. I'm gonna show you a few, um, few uh, reports. So let's talk about audiences reports. So audiences reports is all about your audience. Who is your audience? Um, how many visitors, how many sessions, how many um, uh, conversions has happened from all the users? So it's a very popular report. I have used it so many times. So I'm going to change this because as I see, I am not uh, working on my startup anymore. So uh, let me change it from 2020, 2021 to 2019. That's where we are, we are doing a lot of business. So, So these are, the, these are the live data collected by the actual customer. These are not the dummy data, just to let you know, guys. And these are the data from the website called brownpacket.com. So as you see, these are the traffic. Um, you, can, you can see the number of users here, and you can select the different metrics here, whatever metrics you would like to have. And you can set the goal here. You can look at the site usages, e-commerce metrics if you have implemented. So, as I said, the implementation is done on Google. Right now, it's very uh, standard to use Google Tag Manager. Google Tag Manager is basically uh, uh, a UI where basically you create rules, or I would say you create tags, uh, um, you know, tags to fire on a page or fire on a button click, and then you capture those data into the Google Analytics. So, so basically, uh, in, in, in general, the concept uh, here in the web analytics is to dump a JavaScript file. That JavaScript file, basically it's a, con it's a container. It's a container and that containers holds every scripts which you are going to write. So, so right now, when you are going to implement Google Analytics, you will be just adding a one line of JavaScript code on your website, which will talk about Google Analytics. Okay, sorry, Google Tag Manager. Let me move this out. So Google Tag Manager, okay? And then once you have that Google Tag Manager code on your website, it's one line JavaScript. It's, it's very simple and I'll show you later. And then you start working on this UI. You select your website here. You select your, which uh, uh, account you are working on. So you will select your account. If you, if you don't have any account, you will create a new account for your, uh, for your website or for mobile app. And then you will see all those options here, tags, triggers. So tags are, remember I was talking about tags. So tags are nothing but the two things. As I said, either you, you have the page tags or you have the click tags. 
So you can create those tags um, by, by clicking this new button. You can have a tag configurations um, by, okay, so which, which tags you would like to uh, fire? Because Google has a very strong integrations of the Google products. Google Universal Analytics is very common. Uh, it's very popular these days. Uh, the most common, um, the most recent version of Google Analytics came um, these days is Google Analytics G GA4, I guess. So GA4 is basically a brand new version of Google Analytics where it uh, it offers you analytics, uh, one single library for your web and app. So it's not easy to use one library for your web and app together combined because app is, is different uh, and the website is different. The website works on the cookie and, uh, and, and other things, you know, but app does not work on cookies. They have a uh, other local storage. When you develop app, you will basically create a, um, you know, a local storage uh, on your app and uh, you store it on a small SQL DB uh, on, 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 on Android. And similarly, something is there also on Apple. So, so the way analytics works in mobile and website is different. That's why, but Google uh, has recently come up with a one library, which basically combines the web and the mobile together, which is called uh, Google Analytics 4. The reference is there in my deck. So if you would like to know more, you should be able to learn more on GA4. So you select your tags and then you, you set up the trigger. Trigger is nothing but when you would like to fire. So this is one of the trigger. Uh, you would like to fire this tag on all pages. So for example, if I'm trying to capture all the page load events or page load tags on my site, I will use this trigger. You can add a new trigger. Um, you can choose different trigger. Add exception here. Okay, that's the only trigger I have, I have created so far. So that's why it is just showing. Anyways, so that's, that's, that's what trigger. So you can create as many variables as you want. Uh, these are the different built-in variables and you can define user variables. So the implementation link is there in the deck. So if you guys are looking to implement Google Analytics, go through those links and, uh, and look at it. Now let's talk about something on uh, analysis. So we were talking about Google Analytics uh, in terms of the dashboards and everything. So as you see here, there are different uh, version of the reports. Acquisition reports tells you like from where you got the traffic on the website. As you see in 2019, we had uh, like close to 15,000 users on the website where most of my users are coming from organic search. One of the reason why, because we had a very strong SEO um, for our product. That's why people are searching for the product and they are basically coming to the site directly through. And we did not have enough uh, referral and social media very minimal referral in social media. Similarly, you can create uh, your goals on Google Analytics. How would you create? You can create goals based on your, um, uh, so as you see here, you can, um, you can see whatever goals I have created so far, but you can create uh, new goals. Uh, one of the important thing on Google Analytics uh, or any analytics tool is a segment. Segment uh, like, as, as you see here, segment is basically a portion of user based on a rule which you create. So for example, if you have a user, uh, if you have a database full of all the users from India and you would like to basically understand what is the behavior, what is the conversion from the people who are in Bangalore. So basically you will create a new segment here and you will select, these are the segments I have already created or some of the segments you will basically uh, get automatically created in Google Analytics. Some of the segments are inbuilt, you can say, but you can create your own segments too. So you can select one segment here, and then you basically click on save here, down there. I guess there's has to be some option here. Yeah, you can apply. So when I, when I apply this segment, this will tell us the data only for Bangalore. So out of all users, give me the users who are only from Bangalore. So as you see, we are predominantly based on the Bangalore. So we see gold conversion rate from Bangalore, 65%. This is, yeah, this is obvious. Um, so 
so this is so segment is really important concept um whenever you are in in, in the web analytic industry you would basically try to find out what a certain set of users are doing um i would say that you would never basically analyze the data on the whole data set because because uh, it, it's very tricky it's very tricky to analyze the huge chunk of data rather than you will be analyzing a certain set of data you know so for example if i am a marketing manager of india i'll be looking at data from india only uh, suppose i have a i have a business like walmart.com okay so i'm i'm doing a business for a walmart across globally um, but a marketing manager of india will be looking at data from only india so he will either create a segment based on india or some other variable some other query he will basically run to understand the data from india so segment concept is really important try to understand the segments uh, search on google like segments from google analytics uh, you will get to know more about it what are the tips and tricks to create segments you will certainly get to know that now let's come back to so this is a very basic uh, ui and dashboards uh, from google analytics perspective google provides you another uh, ui which basically talks about uh, uh, basically where you can deal with a very heavy set of data they they call it big query so big query is is basically a, a part of google cloud so you can you can just search big query on google and uh, you can activate the the free version which will give you like 30 dollar credit to explore google cloud products it includes other products also uh, you can click on the navigation to understand what all the other products you have once you signed up for the google cloud products so what you can do on google query uh, google big query google big query is nothing but a ui where you can import the data from outside world and you basically do a query and uh, you understand what is going on with the, your data you can combine data with your query so it's 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 basically hard to to um, you know analyze data from different different sources so you have data from your um online uh, website you have data from your store you have data from your customer support you have data from your uh, return uh, products and uh, canceled orders and all all those sort of things where customer call on call on phone and they basically cancel for the order or or, or ask for the refund or whatever all those data are there but not every data is online so so basically you bring all the data here by clicking on add data and then you run a query you basically join those data by running some sql query so this is the sql ui and you write some sql query here and the result will be shown here uh, as you say query results you can save the results you can explore the data by clicking on this one so google provides you a very standard set of sample data you know so so as you see you can explore the sans, uh, sample data as you click on the sql workspace you will get all those uh, sample data and you can pin this as a project you know and then what you can do here is you can basically select anything so let's let's select uh, covid uh, government response you know so we'll click on this carrot we'll export policy tracker so this is the data so these are the field names uh, in our in our report you know and uh, you can create a query out of this so you can uh, you can run a query you can query table you can put a query table you can um, you can select uh, select star from it means it will give you all the all the row so you can write the sql query here and you can run it and give your response here so as you see the response is shown here um the response is in this tabular column response will be in the json format you can export the json format and you can um, do whatever other analysis you can do so it's a very um very user friendly ui google is providing um big query uh, platform so so you can add the adobe analytics data also here so it's it's very helpful now i think we have spent too much time here uh, any questions here on google analytics yeah i will chime in for a minute so guys uh, you 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 must be learning sql in your syllabus so why uh, learning sql is important you can see here uh, 
what what do you use sql for where do you use sql when you get a real job in the industry so yeah. tools like B- B- google bigquery uh, these are the tools that you will be using and executing sql queries into you will have uh, your data sets connected there it can be a data dump or it can be a real time data and that's the tool where you will be using uh, google, uh, sql along with other data sets like data coming from google analytics adobe analytics or surveys which are done on the customers uh, all data will be dumped there and you will be running your sql queries the reports that you generate out of the sql queries will be shared with the analyst and analyst will be crunching those numbers so this is what will be happening if you get a job as a person who executes the sql queries all right great thanks ashish thank you so let me let me jump on adobe analytics so now let's let's talk about adobe analytics adobe analytics is by default one of the most strongest enterprise web analytics tool in the market right now um it is it is a not free tool it's a it's 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 basically um you have to pay a lot of money so you will see um you will see that uh, only uh, mid segment client and big client are having adobe analytics you will see startup and the small industry would have very um uh, very minimal use of adobe analytics on their website or or maybe on their app because it's it's very costly product and but but one of the important thing about adobe analytics here is that it's it's it can be used for anything any tracking as i told you it can be used for content analytics it can used for ux analytics you can it can used for product analytics anything it can be used for so so that's why it is very strong product um it can use for heat map also uh, so and then and the reason why because of the ecosystem it has created so far there are so many uh, freelancer uh, out there for adobe analytics there are so many consultants out there there are so many agencies who are working on adobe analytics and creating um, different javascript functions to to basically extend the feature uh, existing feature of the adobe analytics for example there are functions to to track the the click there are functions to track the page load uh time their functions to track the um uh, the the i would say the screen time and and a lot of things you know so it, it's totally depends on what what you need and if you are a bank and if you are a uh, you know e-commerce firm most of the e-commerce firm in united states most of the banks in united states are using adobe analytics so if you are planning for uh, a career in web analytics i think this would be one of the massive tool you have to learn because the market is huge the career opportunity is also really great in adobe analytics and if you just go and search on linkedin about the jobs in adobe analytics you will find tons of jobs in the companies uh, like e-commerce companies or the companies who are uh, like media agencies they basically work for other companies so it's very common so why adobe analytics as i said it's one of the most popular enterprise product out there for web analytics it's it has multiple capabilities the capabilities which has not been matched by any existing web, web analytics product out there in the market so so that's why and uh, the career opportunity is huge in this in this uh, product so that's why and the one of the uh, important thing you should be learning uh, um you know um, in in adobe analytics is implementation as i so as i said you have to strategize what you're going to track and then you will be working on um how you're going to implement those so adobe analytics implementation link is also there in the reference uh, document so you can um look at that and similarly as i said uh, adobe analytics also follows similar approach for implementation just like google uh, adobe also has a tag manager they call it adobe launch tag manager uh, that's the tag manager name and you can go to launch.adobe.com and you can access that tool and uh, and similarly you have to just add one line of launch on your page and you have to create the tags just like what we used to do on google tag manager and the same concept uh, the concept of implementation is exactly the same so if you learn one product here either google tag manager or adobe launch you will find a lot of correlation between these two products so you will not face any difficulties in implementation you will face challenge in um, firing the tags 
Uh, sometimes the tags will fire, sometimes the tags will not fire. So all this troubleshootings you have to do when you are working with these products because because of the because of the JavaScript nature of the JavaScript, uh, the the load time of the JavaScript. Sometimes the tags would be very slow. Sometimes the page would not be loading 100%, and you're firing the tags before the page loads. So all those things are really important. So I would say when you start implementing or learn implementing, try to understand some of the basic concepts of how HTML page loads, how the DOM loads. So these tag managers work on the uh, load of the DOM elements. Uh, so for example, uh, page load um, and uh, window load and uh, like document ready. All these things you should be understanding uh, when you work on the stack manager. These are the very basic concepts. I am going to add those key concepts in the reference so that you can learn those also uh, before you start implementing any uh, tag manager product. So once you implement those tag manager products, you have the data in your uh, in, in your uh, you know database, I would say database. It's just a database. Google also is maintaining a database here. Is everything in database? There's nothing in the in the text file, you know. Similarly, Adobe also maintains a database. The way Adobe implements is different. Google implements is different, but the key concepts remain the same. Okay. So now let me select here uh, uh, report suite here. Basically, it gives me the data, and I will change the date here. I will change the date um, from uh, this year to, let me see, last year, you know, let's, let's look at the last year data. So let's look at the page data. So here you find, so in, in, the, in the Google Analytics, you saw some of the reports already inbuilt. Some of the reports here also inbuilt. You have to just select the template uh, you, you can go ahead and select the template. So templates can give you automated report, but you can build the report also here by drag and drop, which is really, really simple uh, in Adobe Analytics. As you see here, I just drag and drop last year report for a fictitious store um, um, I was working on and you see all those pages reports are, and you just have to dump, dump in the metrics. Like suppose you wanna know the page views. So. So before you use the product, it's, it's important to that you know some of the basic concepts of the product. So if you go and join the YouTube channel of Adobe, Adobe, Adobe Analytics, you will see tons of videos on how to use Adobe Analytics workspace. Product team organizes a lot of uh, webinars and sessions on, on, on Adobe Analytics. Attend those sessions, attend those webinars, learn from those concepts, how to use these uh, uh, panels and how to create different type of reports because there are plenty types of reports you can create. So for example, as I mentioned, um, you can, um, as you see here, these are the different uh, panel you can create, attribution panel you can create. You might not be familiar with all the sort of reports here, but uh, as we go, we will talk about it during the session. Uh, you can create fallout report, which is really common uh, in the e-commerce world where we talk about how the user are basically falling out from the landing page till the checkout, uh, you know? And then we'll talk about the flow, like the flow, registration flow, what are the registration flows users are taking? Uh, we can compare two segments, uh, two different set of users, how they are behaving with, against each other. So all those things are there. It's very, um, I would say, uh, important uh, to, to, to have a quick navigation on these things. So probably you might not have a test account because it's not a, it's not a free tool. Uh, I have a free text sandbox, so that's why I'm using it. Otherwise um, you cannot use it. Um, but but uh, yeah, join some of the webinars and the sessions on the YouTube, which happens from the Adobe Analytics product team, where you will be getting the live uh, uh, demo on the new features, new details and new things. So. You just have to search on uh, YouTube, Adobe Analytics uh, to um, the channel. So that that will that will be very very simple for you. So yeah, so that that was a quick demo on Adobe. I couldn't um, spend a lot of time on Adobe Analytics, but as I said, this is not an easy tool. This is a really complex tool, and as I said, this tool has a lot more than what Adobe Analytics offers. So it takes time. I have added few references so that you can go through that references. And there are plenty of job opportunities 
for Google Analytics and Adobe Analytics. So you, if you know one tool, you will have plenty of idea. You can crack the interviews of other tool easily, but the basic concept remains same. As I explained here, the key concept remains same in implementation and analysis. So don't worry about the key concepts. Learning tool, very easy, but learning key concepts is, is kind of like, you know, difficult. So that's, that's about the today's session on demo of Google Analytics and Adobe Analytics. I have, uh, I have few references. Let me share my screen again. So that was, uh, that was pretty much it I wanted to cover today. As I said, I have added some references here um, and you can feel free to add me on LinkedIn if you want. And then I will open the floor for Q&A. So I, I know I took more time uh, today, but uh, the people who are on the Zoom right now, uh, floor is open for any questions. Any questions? I've got a question. Sure. This is Adelaide. Uh, so I understand maybe you got like experience using these uh, tools like Google Analytics and Adobe. So maybe for somebody who is like starting to venture into, into this field or area, what would you recommend would be the starting point, which tool to start learning? Yeah, so I would say um, start with the concepts, I start with using uh, Google Analytics. Uh, it's, a, it's a simple tool, free tool available. And uh, as I said, concepts is important. Web analytics concepts will be the same. The definition of page views, the definition of bounce rates, the session flow, segments, all the concepts would remain same exactly when you move from one tool to other tool. There are other tools also which you can use for free. Mixpanel is a very popular tool out there, uh, which is also used for website and mobile app. Uh, you, can, you, can, um, you can use that tool also for free. But focus on the concept. Uh, try to understand what is bounce rate. Try to understand what is page views. What is unique visitor? Because when you do the data analysis, you will be answering the questions from different stakeholders, which will basically based on these key metrics. You know. Thank so, you. Yeah. And uh, Adil, try to create your own block because Google Analytics is free, but you need a place where you implement the Google Analytics. So there are a lot of uh, places where you can start your block free. Go ahead, create your one block, add few articles. That that blog is live. People can visit that blog. So you can see how many people are visiting it, what are different reports you can run on your blog. Uh, so it, it it becomes very interesting. If you have your own blog, that blog becomes like your playground. You can do different things there and see how what are the results uh, back in Google Analytics. Wow. Thank you. That's interesting. I am... Um... We, we will share some uh, resources. Um, Ashish will share the recording and the, uh, and, and the presentation file. And the presentation file will have a few more blogs and some of the resources where you can learn more. Uh, hi, I have a question. My name is Hamza. Yeah. Um, so since you have experience in Adobe and Web Analytics and Google Analytics, um, when you started, did you do any certifications? And if you did, from where? And for someone who wants to build his resume, what do you recommend doing? Yeah, so, so when, when I started Adobe Analytics, I, I, I started with my agency, um, the sub, a Publicity Sapient. That was the company where I started. I started learning the key concepts. And then as soon as I, I was comfortable with the key concept, I completed my certification. Certification gives you a kind of a, a, a good positive energy uh, to understand uh, where I am. Uh, can I handle some of these key concepts which are mentioned in the certification? So it's definitely a, a, a good thing to do a certification, but don't, don't just learn the concepts to complete the certification. You should be doing the certification where you are comfortable using the tool and where you have to make sure that now you are planning for a, a jump in your career. So that certifications is like for that, these things are helpful instead of just uh, 
just to um, you know just to just preparing for seven days just for the certification will not make sense here. Um, work on a few things uh, for like uh, six months to one year, and then do the certification and then build your resume, and then put your resume put that in your resume. And as 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 he said, more than that, uh, maintaining a blog, sharing your thoughts, joining the community and the forums uh, on these things are, are really helpful because especially Adobe Analytics, which is like very closed field. Uh, it's it's not very open because as like Google Analytics. So joining some of the community and forum of Adobe Analytics YouTube channel uh, might be really helpful to build your concepts and understanding. Thank you. Yeah. And Hamza, if you have like tons of certifications on your resume, uh, your interviews might also become difficult because if I am interviewing someone, with no certifications on resume versus someone with three certifications, I might change my questions uh, for the guy who comes with a lot of certifications. So please be aware of that. Uh, when you do certifications, ensure you continue to use that tool because after a month, two months, you will forget a lot of things that you learned for the certification. So uh, just be careful on that part too. Just a follow-up question. Do you think it's uh, useful to have a couple projects or like you said, blogs and include that on our resume just so the employers could go and see what we've done? Instead yes. of just like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. That, that will create more impact than having a certification. A bunch of 50 questions, you answer those on a adobe.com or google.com doesn't mean you are pretty experienced. But if you write a blog, if you create a small project, it gives you more understanding. So put that on a resume, that will have better impact, I would say. All right, perfect, thank you. Yeah. Any further questions? <clears throat> Hi, Abhishek and Ashish. I'm Maria. I have a question. Um, so when you're when you're saying that um, we can just build a blog and then we can just play around with the Google Analytics tools. So is there a restriction of a data limit that we can just like content for, for ourselves only just to learn? Is there any restriction for the data? Can we just uh, pull data from Kaggle website and just look around the options? Yeah. Can yeah. you tell me about Okay. Yes. So Kaggle, Kaggle is is like a, a, a sea of data set. You can yeah. you can pull the data from the Kaggle and you can uh, pass into the BigQuery and you can do the data analysis, which which is what we are going to do uh, next class when we are going to introduce Jupyter Notebook and all the exploratory data analysis. We are going to do this. We are going to use the Kaggle data set. But for this one, uh, for the web analytics, if you have your own blogs. And if you implement the analytics by yourself, so for example, you are creating a tag on Google Tag Manager for all the pages, you have a contact info page where you are tracking how many people are submitting the form by clicking submit. So you will create those tags on real time on Google Tag Manager, and you will write that experience on your blog or maybe in a post and you put that in a resume, then that make more sense to whoever is going to hire you because they know you that you have done it and, and, and you know how it works. But certifications are more of like theoretical basis. In certification, you will not have a lot of uh, practical uh, questions. Uh, very few certifications have practical questions. Mostly they will ask you theory, theory. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Uh, hey Abhishek and hi Ashish, uh, this is Shimoni. I have a question regarding the integration of uh, Google Analytics with the BigQuery. So does uh, like how Google Analytics can be integrated with BigQuery, does Adobe also have a similar platform to write SQL queries? Yeah, yeah. Adobe has a experience platform. Um, so you, you can use BigQuery only with the Google Analytics the 360. Uh, you cannot okay. use it. That's, what, that's one of the constraint your your company or your 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 website needs to have like 360 contract because it's a paid version it's not a free version then you will be able to integrate 360 uh, like you will be able to integrate bigquery and google analytics uh, adobe has a platform named adobe experience platform it's a it's a platform where you can import data from all the different sources and then you can write sql query uh, and you can you can integrate uh, those uh, different data sets based on the schema of the data set 
uh, with the primary key or with the foreign key, and you can uh, you can create a different view, and you can store the data in a different data set uh, by running those uh, uh, SQL queries. So it's a experience platform. Uh, Shish, do you have a quick link for that? Yeah, I can send link over the chat. So it's a it's a very popular tool. Um, let me ping you on uh, Slack. Uh, sorry, here itself, Shimoni, for you, and you can take a quick look. Thank you so much. Yeah, I just pinged on the chat. So companies are trying to build a platform. Uh, which which basically uh, can handle a huge set of data and uh, the built-in UI for SQL are becoming really popular. Um, you will have lots of online tool available, which can gives you ability to bring in data and do the analysis on the cloud. Uh, and uh, you know, BigQuery is one of such, such product, which is free from Google. Great. So, uh, guys, any question, uh, feel free to ask or drop it in the chat. Or I'm going to share our Twitter handle. You can connect with us over Twitter or LinkedIn and ask your questions. We will get back to you. Uh, Abhishek, we, I know we ran over the time, but thank you for your time, extending uh, your time. And guys, thank you for sticking. Uh, so this is our session first. Uh, we have five sessions overall. We plan for five sessions. This was first. So for next Saturday, uh, we will connect again. So next four Saturdays, we will connect 11 a.m. CST. And we will continue to talk about marketing analytics and different techniques uh, people use in marketing analytics. So Abhishek and everyone on the uh, session here, thank you very much. We will connect again uh, next Saturday, 11 a.m.